Today, let's break down the newest SMG, the Lapa. With the weekend ahead of us, many of you are probably wondering if it's worth unlocking this weapon. So by breaking down the stats of this weapon, I'll be telling you guys its pros, cons, and whether or not it's worth unlocking, and if it has a place in the meta. So in this build, we'll be using the Agency Suppressor, the 12.4 inch M204 Reinforced Barrel, Tiger Team Spotlight, Mill Stop Reflex, and Stanag 50 Round Mag. As you can probably tell, this is a sniper support build. And you're probably wondering why I chose this specific barrel, when many other people are using different ones. But, I gotta say that this is the only barrel that can increase our fire rate without hurting us in the role of sniper support. And when we get into the stats, you'll see why choosing any barrel would be an extremely great mistake. So, let's get into the stats, starting with mobility. It has an ADS time of 230 milliseconds, which is pretty nice seeing a long range SMG in the green instead of yellow. Its reload and reload add times are 3.02 and 2.67 seconds respectively, so it doesn't reload the fastest. And it has a mag cap of 50, so you probably will be reloading more often than you think. Its movement and sprint speeds are pretty great and average for long range sniper support builds. Its ADS straight speed though is a bit lower than I would like. Its sprint and attack sprint out times are pretty average for a long range SMG, but because it doesn't have an open bolt delay, it does have a pretty good advantage there. Its stability though is 2T, but this doesn't hurt you as much as you think. But what does hurt is its bullet velocity at 476.2 meters per second, which is extremely slow. Most sniper support SMGs are around 600, and you're definitely going to be able to feel the difference with this. And lastly, its rate of fire is 12 rounds per second or 720 rounds per minute. So it gets a mobility score of 38. Its recoil does seem like a lot, and to be fair, it does have a lot of vertical magnitude. But it is a pretty simple diagonal line, and it's extremely easy to just pull down on. And since its side-to-side -side balance is very little, it does not surprise you in any way, and you can totally use this up to 60 meters. So it gets a recoil score of 34. For its damage, it has a drop off at 12 meters and at 19 meters. In the first damage range, you're not going to be getting a great TTK unless you're hitting upper torso shots. Its lower torso TTK is comparable to a long range assault rifle, and its limb and head TTKs are just really not competitive. However, if you manage to get one headshot in with two upper torso shots, you can suddenly get a TTK of 500 milliseconds, which is extremely great. And suddenly, you can compete against many of the better SMGs. And this is extremely attainable, since out of the seven shots, you only need to be semi-precise with three. The second damage range is a bit of a problem. Its upper torso and lower TTKs are similar to long range assault rifles and closer range SMGs. Which means that the longer range SMGs are still in their first damage range and they're probably going to be beating you here. So avoid combat between 12 and 19 meters unless you get the drop on someone. And although you can technically get an 8 shot kill if you get one headshot and three upper torso shots, that requires half of your shots being pretty precise. And it's not worth it. Ideally, you'd want to close the distance because your TTKs would be much better, but if you can, you can try to push back to around 30 meters. Because in the third damage range, most of your TTKs are either average or above average. So depending on the weapon you're facing, you'll either be on the same level as them or even have an advantage. And again, you can technically get another 8 shot kill, but you would need to get 5 upper torso shots and 1 headshot, which is very unlikely. So it gets a damage score of 43.42. And when we add up all the categories, it gets a final score of 115.42. This is a pretty decent score for a weapon, especially a long range SMG. And I honestly think it does have a place in the meta. It requires a bit more skill than a more close quarters oriented weapon and a more long range oriented weapon, but because of this, if you learn to use it, you can use it at almost any range. And unlike other weapons in this category, it does not have the low mobility of a modern warfare weapon, and it does not have an open bolt delay that most of the longer range SMGs have from Cold War. This weapon has a lot of potential, but you do need to learn to use it. In the first damage range, you can be extremely competitive, but you need to hit two shots to the upper torso and one headshot. If you don't do this, you'll be losing to people with open bolt delays and average TTK. And I'm sure it was balanced this way because its first drop off is at 12 meters, where it is still competitive. Between 12 and 19, it's not that great, so you need to be either extremely aggressive or be pretty defensive with it. But at that point, why not just use an assault rifle with a slightly better TTK? 
In the third damage range though, it's a lot more forgiving because of its superior recoil, it's one of the easier SMGs to get used to. So you'll probably be hitting a lot more shots and you'll be getting an average DTK most likely. But again, if you're only using this in the third damage range, you may as well be using an assault rifle. In order to truly use this SMG, you have to be using it in its first and third damage ranges. The Lapa is good at many things, but it's also not the best. It's pretty average in many situations as well, and it requires you to be both aggressive and defensive. It doesn't have the best TTKs, and it doesn't have the best mobility, nor the best recoil. But it has an option to do all of these things pretty decently. Will someone with an MP7 or a PPSH beat you long range? Possibly, if they also know how to use it better. But if you catch someone off guard with an OTS and they don't have enough time to switch to their longer range weapon, you will definitely win that fight. And if you happen to turn a corner and you see someone with a PPSH and you both pull the trigger at the same time, well, you also have the advantage now too. Will you have the best bullet velocities or the best movement? No, but it's good enough. Seriously, this is one of the few weapons that you can run around the map with and not be at a disadvantage. You don't have to switch to a closer range weapon, and within 60 meters, you can easily fight back. And if you're taking fire beyond 60 meters, you can probably get to cover. So I highly recommend that you try out the Lava, especially if you're someone that can't really find a secondary that clicks with you. Or especially if you find yourself thinking that your weapon isn't fast enough, isn't good enough at close range, or isn't good enough at longer ranges. So that's the Lapa. Have you unlocked it or tried it out yet? If so, let me know. And if you haven't, do you think you're going to? And as always, if there's any weapon, build, or part of the game you don't want to break down, let me know and you may see it on the next Community Wednesday. But that's the video. If you enjoyed it or it's helped you in any way, let me know by leaving a like. If you got any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section down below. And if you want to make sure that you never miss another video, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.